On March 2nd, 2022, two astronomers, Bruce Bolin and Frank Massey, at the Palomar Observatory in California, spotted a faint object moving across the night sky. But later observations confirmed it to be a comet originating from the Oort cloud at the outer edge of our solar system. Once its trajectory has been plotted, it was clear that this comet, now named C-2022 E3, would make a relatively close approach to Earth. So the scene was set for astrophotographers across the world to go and hunt for the perfect shot of this interplanetary visitor. If you'd like to explore the depth of the space, then you want to hear about today's sponsor, Farpoint. Farpoint makes everything you need for stargazing and astrophotography. Whether you're new to the hobby or if you're a veteran astronaut, Farpoint has what you need. Do you have an old DSLR that you want to breathe some new life into? Get one of their compact double reflectors, perfect for capturing deep sky objects like the Pleiades or the Orion Nebula. Go to farpoint.d2a.com and start your space adventure today. Since C2022 E3 was discovered, there has been hundreds of photos published, both by amateurs but also professionals. However, I had other plans. See, I did not just want to take a single picture. With the comet's very elliptical orbit, it would be moving incredibly fast once it got close to Earth. So fast, in fact, that we would be able to see it move visibly from night to night. So instead of just taking a single picture, I wanted to take a time lapse of the comet moving across the night sky. However, this would turn out to be more difficult than I first anticipated. The key to any good astro shot is pre-planning. Today is January 14th, and according to theskylive.com, the comet will have its closed approach on the 2nd of February. This gives me a few weeks to prepare and get the first test shots in to experiment with framing and frame intervals before I go out for the real deal. Unfortunately, well, the weather has been terrible this winter in Denmark, receiving record-breaking amount of rain, but on the 21st, it seemed I would finally get a break. The sky would finally clear up, and with just nine days to the closed approach, it was not a day too soon. So I packed my gear and I got in my cold weather outfit, and under a cloudless sky, I set out out of the city's polluting light and into the dark Danish countryside. But the weather was not done playing with me just yet. Despite the clear skies when I left, by the time I arrived at my observation location, an almost total cloud cover had moved in. I figured I might get lucky and the cloud would disappear as quickly as they have arrived, so I decided to wait. While waiting around, I was looking at some of the planes breaking through the cloud cover and thought, well, I might as well try to take a few pictures of them to kill time. But after an hour of nocturnal plane spotting, I gave up, packed my gear, and headed home, defeated. The following days, the weather was back to its usual overcast, but on the 30th of January, I was finally presented with a second chance. This is just two days before the comet's closest approach, and while it would be very windy, this would likely be my only chance to get this shot. So I had to give it a go, and hope that I could find some shelter from the wind, off I went into the dark once more, hoping for better luck with the clouds and that the wind wouldn't shake the telescope too much. I managed to find a calm spot with a shed providing cover from the wind and I began setting up my equipment. I would be using my Meet LT 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain scope for this shot. Once everything was set up and properly aligned, I was ready to begin collecting light. However, this was when I realized that I made a critical mistake. With the comet being a relatively new discovery, it would obviously not be available in a telescope's hand computer. While it is possible to add your own objects to the hand controller, it would require a laptop and a special cable, neither of which I had with me. So I had to come up with a plan B. Without being able to track the comet itself, I figured I could track a star close to the comet and have the comet move through the frame while the background stars may remain stationary. Not the shot I originally had in mind, but it would have to do. I looked up the comet's declination and right ascension, manually typed it into the hand controller, and set the camera to work. I cannot explain how excited I was when I saw the first successful light frames show up on the camera. All I could do now was wait while the camera was doing its things and hope for the best. About an hour later, it was done, and this is the result.
If this has piqued your interest in astrophotography, then remember to subscribe for more astro nerd videos and to check out today's sponsor, Farpoint.